Solicitors. Rapid Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims. After an unexpected victory over the Bray Hay clan on Wednesday night, the Five Flyers really do have that playoff spot in their sights. But we've come up north to see if they can take a victory over the Coventry Blaze and get even more closer to that all-important eight spot. Yes, we're in Kakadi, home of the Five Flyers, the youngest side in the Elite Ice Hockey League, the oldest side in British Ice Hockey. This building, it has so much history, so much character, so much enthusiasm. We love it here. It's all here on Sky Sports. Welcome to the Rapids Listers Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. This week we've come to Fife to see what all the buzz is about. And joining alongside me, as always, is Dave Muxims. Hello, Dave. You had to say that, didn't you? <laughs> I've got to get Have out, you got out of the way. system, yes. <laughs> Dave, for the past three weeks, you've been telling me what a great place Fife is. And do you know what? I have to agree with you. There's a first for everything. Well, I'll tell you what. It's not just this rink. It's the whole Kakadi community. They love their ice hockey up here. And perhaps of all the ten cities, towns that ice hockey's played in in the Elite League, nobody embraces their hockey club like the people of Kakadi. And in September and October, they were just happy to be back in the Elite League. But... Those times pass by, don't they? Now they want success. And over the last few weeks, despite losing a couple of players, they've signed some new imports. There's a big batch of new, fresh enthusiasm about the Flyers. And of course, with that game against the Bray clan that they won in Glasgow last Wednesday, they really think they can make the, the, uh, the playoffs now. Well, you just said a few moments ago that you know the past few weeks they've had a better run of luck. Do you think maybe this first year in the league may have been a bit of a trial and error? Over the next few years, are we going to really see them start to cut their teeth? Absolutely. I honestly believe that if you're a player wanting to play in Scotland, that building, that rink pad there is where you want to play. And we'll see that later tonight with the enthusiasm and the passion that everybody shows in this building. You say trial and error? Yes. They made a lot of mistakes, the Five Flyers. They thought they could start with six imports. They put a lot of faith into British players that didn't have the experience of playing at this level. They were big mistakes. They, they underestimated the Elite League, but they've learned from that. They've openly admitted that. I spoke to Big Jack Wishart. Uh, you'll see that interview earlier, uh, later, and he confirms that. But the Five Flyers, they're smart people up here. They'll learn from their mistakes, and this will be the place. This is a top four or five team in the next two to three years. Well, they're playing the Coventry Blaze tonight and there are some rumours flying around that there could be a few player movements going on there. Yeah, I think around the Elite League there'll be player movements, Anna, and I think the Coventry Blaze will probably head that up. I see players coming in, I see players moving out. As Paul Thompson tries to shuffle the pack and make a run for the, uh, the final of the playoffs. Well, we'll talk about that a bit later in the show, but time now to get the first little bit of action for you. Here's Chris Ellis. The first of two home games in two nights for the league leaders. They went ahead. Good work by Pele behind the net, setting up Jeff Mason and 11th of the season. So 1-0 to the Belfast Giants at 4.37. If they thought it was going to be a cakewalk in the first period, they were wrong. They did outshoot the Caps 14-2, but the visitors drew level. A rebound for Yarolin, 33rd of the season. What a year for Yarolin, and we're level at 1-1. Going into the second set. Again, the Giants outshot the Caps, this time 13-7. That's a neat move. Garside driving the net. And ninth of the year, 3.05 into period two. We see the Belfast Giants lead by two goals to one. They needed to convert those chances into goals. And that's what they did in the second session. This is a power play situation for the home side. Great movement this time again from Pele. And before that, Dignard and Lloyd scores a 16th goal of the year. So 3-1 at 24-30. The goals kept coming and two minutes and 20 seconds later. Good work from Mason down the right-hand side. Gets the pass away. Clark goes in 
a seventh of the year for him. So that's 4-1 at the end of two sessions. Into the third, and again, the Caps were outshot. This time, 15-2. Robert Dowd with that one alone in the slot. So the shots on goal in the whole game, 42-11 in favour of the Belfast Giants. So at that stage, Dowd's goal, well, he made it 5-1. But sloppy defence by the Belfast Giants. Walton gives it away and Yarolin sets up Barry, a second of the year for him. So we do have a 5-2 game. Could the Caps come into it? They'd only got... Well, about seven minutes to go. It would be a famous comeback, but Belfast were in no mood to give this one away. What a move from Robert Dowd to score his 18th goal of the year and complete the scoring. Final score, Belfast Giants 6, Edinburgh Capitals 2. A massive, massive game in the Odyssey. First against second, must win for Nottingham. And they took the lead after 66 seconds. Reinen and his first goal for the club, tipping in the shot from Guy Lapine. David Clark with the other assist, but backed by one of the biggest crowds of the season at the Odyssey. A redirect in front from Adam Keith, And we are tied at 1-1, game alive. But with the period coming to a close, power play for Nottingham and trademark goal, top of the left circle for David Clark with just two seconds to go in the session. So 2-1 Nottingham. There, well, Jordan Fox goes down. Two plus two accidental high stick call on Garside and then big hit from Guy Lapine on Darrell Lloyd. Look how hurt, look how much pain Lloyd looks in. Well, the diagnosis is he's going to be out for four to six weeks. Danny Myers follows up his own rebound. Murphy couldn't hold it. And Nottingham lead 3-1 in the second session. Could the Giants find a way back in the third period? They got one goal. Peacock there with the final touch. But that's as good as it got for them. Belfast's six-game winning streak comes to a close. And Nottingham winning the Odyssey in regulation for the first time since March 09. Belfast 2, Nottingham 3. A massive game at the bottom of the table as ninth place Dundee were looking to close the gap on eighth place Hull Stingrays. No goals in the first session. Second period action. Dooley shot tipped in by player coach Cloutier for a 1 0 lead for the Stingrays. Then a scrap. Campbell against Brennan Turner. This one goes on for a while and Campbell starts to get some good rights away, then tries to go with some lefts. And Campbell at this stage holding on, looking to get an arm free. You can see he's trying to get that right one free now, but it's turning into a bit of a wrestling match at the moment. Campbell gets some over the top with the rights, but the pair of them hanging on. Then a couple more really where Campbell just tries to get going. And again, Campbell trying to get those punches in with his right hand there. You can see the fans are enjoying this fight between the two of them. Eventually, the linesmen break them up. That one went on for a while without any real brute force. So, 1-0 at this stage. Stingrays, that's 2-0. No goal disallowed. Man in the crease. So the Stingrays miss the chance to go two goals up. And the Dundee Stars begin their fight back. Still in the second period. Oh, there's a man on the doorstep. It's new boy Kalanis. His first for the season. His first for the club. It's 1-1. And we are game alive and we're all tied up. So into the third period. And Brennan Turner scores from the left circle. He can fight. He can also score goals. So that's 2-1. The Stingrays, though, they weren't done. Nice stick handling stills there from Silverthorne, a 19th of the year. We're tied at 2-2, but a giveaway in the whole defence is picked up by Dolan. And advancing at the back door is Hutchins. 3-2, four minutes and four seconds into the third period. We've had three goals at the start of the third session. That's a lovely finish from Hutchins, his second of the night from the right circle. That made it 4-2. Stingrays looking now, but that's a giveaway. Empty net goal. Dolan, a 12th of the year with 32 seconds remaining. Final score, Hall 2, Dundee 5. Thanks for that, Chris. Well, earlier, Dave caught up with Flyers boss Jack Wishart to talk about the good old days. In fact, weren't you there for most of them? Jack, I guess uh, life's always about looking forward and moving on, but it would be remiss of us, wouldn't it, not to uh, take a good look back at the history of the Five Flyers whilst we're stood in this fantastic museum you have here. But this, this building, the whole barn's got a great feel, great atmosphere, great history, hasn't it? Well, David, this old barn, you know, it's a really, it jumps sometimes. 
Uh, we have a really, ho really hockey town here, and we do, well, you've seen all the photographs at our museum here, all the memorabilia we've got. We really, really enjoy hockey. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good. You're a Fife man born and bred here. Uh, what's your earliest memory of this place? Well, my earliest memory is way back in the 60s, early 60s, when I was a teenager. And uh, coming skating on a Saturday night, coming to the hockey at that time on a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And on a Thursday night hockey, you had to book your ticket early or you wouldn't get into the place. Mm -hmm. It was really busy. And Saturday night skating was a crowd of us. And one Saturday night, I was skating around and bumped into this young lady and knocked her down. And I picked her up again and we had a good chat. And then she, she finished up being my wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so has, I think there's a lot of the, these stories in Kirkcaldy, I think. Yeah, it's a major part of the community here, isn't it? You, you go back to the 60s. I go back probably about 30 years to the Simsies, the Stoyanoviches and, and the Brands. And this building was the building to come and that's play right, in. Right. And I guess that's what you, you're trying to get back to now, isn't it? We are. We are trying to get that back into here again. <laughs> Uh, joining the Elite League, well, we thought we've got to do something here. We couldn't go on what we were doing in the, the Northern, where the crowds were dying off. We wanted to bring hockey back to the fans that they wanted. And that's when we made the decision to, to join the Elite League. There's a lot of history why you didn't do it before, and it should be all going forward now. Is there any regrets about joining the league, or is it onwards and upwards for Fife? Oh, I would say it's onwards and upwards for Fife, yeah. So, so you made some mistakes, you, you've, you've admitted that already, so, perhaps been a little bit undercooked when you came into this yeah. season. Is this now, from now on, for the rest of this year, is it more of a, a preparation almost for, for what lies ahead for Fife next year and the year after? Oh, definitely. This is a very uh, a learning year, and it's been a very, very steep learning curve for us. I think we really underestimated the strength of the league when we came into it to start with. We thought coming with a few imports, then build up, but really that's where we made the mistake. Mm -hmm. We should have come in maybe stronger. But you learn with these mistakes and we're now starting to see our, the benefits of it now. Yeah. Anna and I walked around Kakadi a little bit earlier and everybody recognises us from the show and everybody's enthusiastic about the Flyers. Now, when I go back to Fife, I remember Ronnie Plum. He was a big influence here. Is it important that you find some characters like the Stoyanoviches and the Plums that the, the fans can relate to and, and, and connect oh, in Kakadi? Yeah, it is, very much so. The fans have got to relate to the players. Yeah. Other players have got to relate to the fans as well. And I think, like say, the players, being a very small town up here, they do go around the town and walk, and people, fans see them, and the players will chat, will chat away to them. So, you know, they're really a good mix with the, with the fans and the players. I think everybody agreed, didn't they, that having five back uh, in the Elite League was, was a great thing. I certainly thought that, but it wasn't until I walked back in here again, and it's been ten years, yeah. that that history just hits you and you think, crikey, what have we all been, yeah, yeah. All been missing? It's, it. uh, it's good to have you back, Jack. Oh, thanks very much, David. It's nice to have you back in Kirkcaldy again as well. Dave, when you walked into that Five Flyers Museum, I have to say your face just lit up. It was like you were a kid at Christmas. Just describe for anyone at home just what it's like. It's like going back in time. It's like going back in history. It's like looking through the old family album. You see, this place in Kakadi is 74 years old. They've got the history, the memorabilia from the last 74 years. They've got one frame and it's got a program from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s and the year 2000. All the hockey shirts, all the great photographs of the past. Now I think I'm an old timer, I think I'm old school and I only go back 25, 30 years. And I remember coming here and seeing Ronnie Plum, Dave Stoyanovich. I remember seeing Al Sims, I remember seeing Danny Brown, Jimmy Pennycook. Great players of the past. Well there's players that were old enough to be their fathers and grandfathers that are, that are celebrated in the Fife Museum. And if you come up to Kakadi to watch your team play the Flyers, spend 15 minutes, spend two hours to have a look around that place because it just emphasises everything that is good about Kakadi, the town, the hockey community that support the Fife Flyers here. It, it was fabulous. I loved it. Now, perhaps, is this something that maybe the other clubs around the league, this is what they're aspiring to? I mean, a couple of hours before face-off and the bar's full. There's a real buzz around this place. Absolutely. Nobody loves the arenas more than I do, Anna. I love the Odyssey, the NIC. I, I love the Sheffield Arena. But you know what? It was those old buildings like Durham, like Lower Parliament Street in Nottingham and like here in Kakadi that gives you that history. And, and of course, will the arenas ever have? A museum. Will people be allowed two or three hours in before a start of the game to come and support their team? Probably unlikely. This is one of the great last 
haunts of, of the game and I hope it succeeds here and drives on and I think it will do. I, I've got good you feelings for five. <laughs> I'm, I'm ever so sorry to the Dundee fans, but five's my new favourite Scottish team. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, wait there. Don't go anywhere, because coming up, we've got plenty more action from the weekend for you. And we'll also be going down to the bar to sample some of that famous Five Flyers hospitality. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Hello and welcome back to the Rapids Listers Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show this week from Kakodi. Now Dave's already made his way down to his favourite place, the bar, to talk to some Five Flies fans. And while I go on down and join him, here's some action for you with Chris Ellis. Nottingham and Fife looking for four-point weekend. Both were victorious on Saturday. Only 12 shots between the two sides in the first period. But Nottingham ended it on the power play, moving around nicely. And the man ghosting into the back door is David Alexandra Beauregard, 29th of the year. It is 1-0 Nottingham in the first session. A move is broken up by the Panthers. And you see them coming forward now with Beauregard. Beauregard right-hand side shoots. Ryan in them with the rebound. That initial pass was by Brock Wilson. Great pass from him, Ryan and getting his second goal for the club. So Nottingham two up at the end of two, and they're coming forward once more in the third. Brandon Benedict, right hand side. Then you see Guy Lapine, and the rebound there is from Fox. And 19th of the season for Jordan Fox. It's 3 0. So Fife looked dead and buried, but they had plenty of fight left in them. And here they're working it well on the power play. And you see Stewart and Seaman combine, and the final touch there out in front by right, Backwellick. It's 3 1. On. So maybe we have a game. But no, Nottingham came back again. They had power play time just halfway through the session. And Lapine gets the assist for Benedict's 17th of the year. And Nottingham get a four-point weekend and close the gap on leaders Belfast. So, end of the game. Nottingham Panthers four, the five flyers one. OK, well, I've come down to the bar and stumbled across two lovely ladies who've been Five Flyers fans for a number of years, Gemma and Lisa. Firstly, Gemma, how long have you been a Flyers fan? I've been a Flyers fan since I was seven, so that'll be 20 years altogether. Wow, so quite a long time then. Yes, it certainly is a long time. Feels like a lifetime. Lisa, what's the best thing about being a Fires fan? I mean, I've been around here now for a few hours and there is an incredible buzz around the place. Yeah, the friendship among the fans and the noise that goes on during the game, just, it comes electric in here. Um, great, great atmosphere. Gemma, how good is it to be back in the big time as a club? It's absolutely fantastic and it has been just amazing for everybody that's been involved for us to be back in the big time and getting to play some of the teams that I remember from being a kid. I remember playing against the likes of Sheffield Steelers when I was about 10 years old and it's just amazing to see them back here. Fantastic. Now, as a club, you didn't have the greatest start of the season, but of late, you seem to be getting a bit better. What are your thoughts on the season so far? Uh, not the best start, like you say. Um, we're definitely coming on, though, and I'm so glad to see the boys doing so well. Um, not only our imports, but some of our Brits are really outstanding this season as well. Um, and hopefully it'll only go up from here. So ladies, what can I expect from the game tonight? I am so excited. Lots of shouting, lots of noise, and hopefully a really, really good hockey game. And can I just comment on your two headpieces? They look fabulous. At least I made them. Yes, yep. Good work, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, I do believe Dave is somewhere else in the pub with a rather special fan. Thanks for that, Anna. Well, I'm joined by two more Five Flyers fans who are going to help me reminisce my time here in Kakadi. Margaret, one of the... If you don't mind me saying, Margaret, one of the oldest Five Flyers fans, and Kevin, who's a mere pup, he's only been watching the Flyers for about 30 years. Margaret, how good is it to have the Flyers back in the big time? It's tremendous, isn't it? It's great. It really is great to see them playing in this league again. Now, Margaret, you and I have just been reminiscing about the great Five Flyers players of the past. Remind me of some of those great names. Oh, well, imports, there was Danny Brown, Ronnie Plum... I remember Stojanovic when he first burst onto the scene. Oh, yes. He was just such an impact player, wasn't he? When he fired the puck, the goalies ducked. They did indeed. <laughs> and then, of course, there was the other ones that came from Canada as well. There were so many of them. And, so many, young, and so many young Scottish lads who made their way as well. Yep. 
Dougie Lato, Gordon Lato, Les Lovell, Laurie Lovell, they were all good players. I think really the goalkeeper that I think has been one of the best I've ever seen is our present one, Garrett. You like he, him as well? Oh, he's a terrific goalkeeper. Wouldn't it be good, Kevin, if the names that Margaret speaks so fondly about in the past, if the players of today and tomorrow that in 20 years' time we could talk about them as family. It'd be fantastic. But you've got some young Scottish lads coming through the ranks here that could emulate, aren't they? Definitely. Gunn's a player to watch out. Um, Kyle Horns and uh, Wands is solid at the back. These are the uh, sort of players that we want to bring through. Yeah. Now, when I first came here with Solihull some 25 years ago, this place was vociferous. It was hostile. The fans really got behind the team. I've been telling Anna she's going to get more of that today. Is that the case? Oh, definitely. Back in the 80s, there was about 3,000 th uh, fans coming into the rink, standing up, uh, hardly sitting down. The noise was immense, and we're looking for that tonight. OK, and Margaret, are we going to see a Five Flyers victory? Are you, oh, going, to make, are you so. going to make the playoffs? Definitely, definitely a Flyers victory can, tonight. Can the Flyers make the playoffs? I think so. Do you think yes. so? Oh, yes. I Do you think, think they can? So. Yeah. Definitely. We're going to put Dundee in the bottom of the league tonight. Okay. I mean, after well, all, oh. this is the first time in this whole of this season that we have been able to play with a full complement of imports. We wish you well. Well, Margaret and Kevin, they both feel that the Five Flyers can make the playoffs. Another man who thinks they can make the playoffs is Danny Stewart. And a few moments ago, I caught up with him. Danny, there's a great buzz about this place right now, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I mean... They're, they're really excited to be back in the top flight and uh, you know gradually the, the team's gotten a lot better throughout the year obviously we had a little bump in the road with a couple guys leaving which kind of set us back a bit but we've replaced those guys and, and you know the rest of the club is, has kind of come a bit together since that happened and, and we seem to be playing uh, better night in night out. That game against uh, Brayhead with that being rude an unexpected victory in many people's eyes how much confidence has that given you that you can go on now and, and perhaps even make that eighth place and make the playoffs oh it's it's given us a big boost because now those guys believe that we can not only you know scrape scrape some wins at home but on the road as well and um you know Brayhead's a tough place to win um not too many teams have done that this year so um we we definitely got to win our games against the teams above us and, but I, I truly believe that if we put in efforts like we did on Wednesday night, we can, we can pick up points, not only against the teams we've got to chase, but against some of the big boys as well. And obviously home form, vital. I can't wait for the atmosphere in here tonight. And the fans can make such a difference to you in this barn. It's such an intimidating place to come and play. Yeah, I mean, they're right on top of you with no glass. And, and once they decide to get into the game, well, we, if we give them a reason to get into the game, they, uh, they're definitely loud and they become that sixth man. And, and it really helps us. And, you know, our recent form at home has been good. We've had a couple of tough losses against some top teams that we're we just about there. And, um, you know, we've had some good results, so hopefully they can be a boost for us tonight. And that means coming in here, the Coventry Blaze, they'll be a little nervous, won't they? What are you expecting tonight? I'm expecting a hard-fought battle. I, you know, over there in Coventry, you know, they're missing a couple of guys. And, uh, um, you know, they're, they're looking to get back into that race with a few wins. So I know they've had a few losses lately, but I know Tom will have those guys ready. I know it's a long bus trip, but I'm sure they'll be ready to go. OK, we wish you luck. All right, thanks. The Blaze went into this one on the back of a disappointing penalty shot loss in five, so some making up to do in front of their home fans and a bullet of a shot on the power play for Robert Farmer gave them the lead, 11.55 gone. But power play time for the Brayhead clan and this goal for Jordan Kristanovic with his 100th elite league point. Not bad in less than two years in the league. Now, still first period action. Somehow, Wood gets that one in. Michael Hicks, the referee, Johnny on the spot to tell you that one across the line. So a 2-1 lead for the home side at the end of the first period. Dustin Wood was to get his second goal. How many times does he score from that right point on the power play? So at 23.07, it's 3-1 Coventry. They were to enjoy the second period, despite being outshot 15-11. That's a neat move from Crowell. The assist to County and Phillips. That makes it 4-1 then. Shea Guthrie coming forward, trying to get in on the action, but instead he had to turn provider. He won't mind about that. 5-1, Robert Farmer with his second of the night and 19th of the year. So Coventry running away with things. Lovely pass from Phillips for the move for Kral on the netminder. Phillips' assist, his last before his move to Saunders. Yes, 
Going to the Danish league is the British defenseman. So he leaves the blaze. There was still time for another goal. This one for Jorgensen for the Brayhead clan. But that was the end of the scoring. And the Blades win six out of their last seven at home now. Coventry six, Brayhead two. Both these sides are now looking nervously over their shoulder with Dundee and the Five Flies below them beginning to pick up points. But no goals in the first session and one in the second. Osman, a 15th of the year and the 400th goal on the road for the Stingrays in the Elite League era. In two, the third session and McKinney, young McKinney with number 12 on his back, he makes it 2-0. At 52-13, power play time now for Edinburgh coming forward. Mackenzie dump on net and somehow Yarolin gets a touch. It deceives Boucher. It's 2-1 at 55-34. So it's a very exciting finish. Breakaway there from Tendler with just a minute and five to go. That makes it 3-1. And again, coming into the offensive zone. And he scores again, Tendler, a 29th of the year, two goals in 15 seconds. And it became three in the last 65 seconds of the game when Hartman got his 14th of the year. But that was too little, too late. Final score in Edinburgh, the Caps 2, Hull 4. So while Dave makes his way back from the bar, we'll take a break, but don't go anywhere. As we've got all the action from tonight here in Kakodi, as well as the rest of the action from around the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Hello and welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. Now, it's not long till face-off time here in Kakoli, but it is time for my favourite part of the show. It's asking Dave his predictions. Who's your money on and why? Well, Anna, there's no way that we can stand in the middle of Kakoli, in the middle of all the Five Flyers fans... You'd be a great and, man. <laughs> ..and not go with the Five Flyers today. There's a sense of anticipation around this building. That victory against the Brayhead clan has given them new hope that they can make the playoffs. I think, Anna... We're all Five Flyers fans tonight, and even though I'm driving home later with Paul Thompson, I'm going to go with the Flyers tonight. OK, well, let's see if Dave's right. It is time for the game now. It is the Five Flyers versus the Coventry Blaze. Take it away, Chris Ellis. A passionate crowd as ever in Fife, and they saw 21 shots in an entertaining first period. And it was the Flyers who outshot the Blaze by one. Guthrie creating the first good chance, though, of the match for the visitors. And Phillips denied. Great sprawling save by Zemlak to keep the scoreline at nil-nil. At the other end, Carl Horn, well, he gets his skates on, comes away right-hand side, almost a dump on net, which was easily dealt with by Peter Hirsch. There was a coming together in the first period as well. All players getting involved a load of them really on a line change wasn't it so plenty of players on the ice and it was really more just a bit of talking and pushing and shoving no punches thrown there was more to come though before the game was out so Coventry having the better of the chances McLean at the heart of things at the moment comes away from the defenseman behind the back of the net out in front fussy left circle straight at Zemlak he made himself big to keep the scoreline at nil-nil. Coventry, well, they were creating lots of chances, lots of pressure. And look, Greg Owen picks it up just inside his own zone, away from one man in the left circle. Lovely finish. Glove side, right-hand side, across the body. That is a good finish from him. So 1-0 Coventry at 14 minutes and 10 seconds. Into the second section and McLean again. He's denied this time by Zemlak out in front. Coventry certainly moving around nicely and Crowell gets his 17th of the season there the other assist going to Cowley it's 2-0 Coventry they're very much in control Stewart really working hard behind the net holds on to the play oh who's there it's Maxwell he can't score he had a chance to score there so we stay at 2-0 well they got stronger as the game went on into the offensive zone they come once more Hartman is with the chance there certainly looking now like they're getting a chance to score the five flies and the noise got louder now a good move into the offensive zone for the home side Dutium and Maxwell involved and look there's Hartmanners had an open net it's a 2-1 game 
13 minutes and 44 seconds into the second period. How are we going to see this game work out? It's tense, it's close. Now Coventry coming forward into the offensive zone now. Good move from Kral. Right hand side, the save is made once more. Fossey with that chance. Certainly plenty of chances going in the Coventry Blazers' favour. The game was close, as I said, for chances. In the end, it was uh, just nip and tuck all the time. Good strong work here. Oh, look, there's some push and shove in front of the net. Strong work on the boards it was by Cowley initially, but then things started going on. In the end, roughing penalties on Stewart, on Farmer, on Guthrie. They all sat in the box in the third session. We see those players coming together, the linesmen coming in to break things up in the end. Carl Horn was there as well. He didn't get a penalty in that incident. But look, Danny Stewart, so much the heartbeat of the home side. It comes out in front. Oh, that one's put wide. So the Flyers can come again. And is that going to go in? No, it just trickles across the base of the line. The Flyers all over the Coventry Blaze at this stage. And we see a penalty. Ooh. A man going to the box is Davy Phillips. Phillips is going to go to the box for cross-checking, and he's talking himself into a misconduct. He's going to play no further part in this game. Is it going to be a tense finish? The clock is ticking down. We're nearly into the final five minutes, but a power play time for the five flyers. They need to make some headway. Shot from the high slot. It's a goal. Danny Stewart gets the tip. Maxwell with the shot. The other assist going to Seaman. We have a 2-2 hockey game. And Fife is alive with the sound of a 2-2 game. Look once more, Danny Stewart coming forward. He was the soul, the heart and soul at times in this game. It's a 2-2 game. But at the other end, the Coventry Blades, can they win it? It's end-to-end -end stuff. McLean into the offensive zone. Glove save from Zamlak. So it's denied. And look. We are going to a penalty shootout. First man, Guthrie. Pad save, Zemlak. It's nil-nil in the shootout. Dennis Kadic. What can he do? Kadic. Oh, what a move. Delays his shot. One nil in the shootout. Farmer could do with scoring. He loses control and takes it out on the backboards. Farmer so good in the shootout in recent weeks, but couldn't score. Back relic. No pad save. So final chance is going to be fussy and it's saved and the five flyers be one of the big boys final score after the shootout flyers three coventry two all your thoughts on that one disappointed to drop a point I, i'm disappointed with our road form david i think that's five out of six we've lost i mean we picked up a point tonight i thought that uh, you know five had a good second period i didn't think we uh, we played to our capabilities there, but I thought in the third period we, we shut five down. I thought we were good for a 2-1 a two one win, and Phillips takes a penalty with, what, two or three minutes to go, and Danny Stewart comes back and gets the tip in front, ties the game. Both teams have opportunities in overtime, but you know we didn't score a goal in the shootout, and you know we've been pretty good at that so far this year, and you know, a highly motivated charge rink tonight, and you know, five come away with the overtime win. You talk about creating chances, you did create enough chances tonight, didn't you? Well, I think that's our problem defensively. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it, but I think with the amount of opportunities that we do create in a game, we're not taking advantage of that. So, you know, I've been in the market. I've, I've signed a guy tonight. Uh, hopefully he'll bring us that little bit more offence than, than we have, and I'm, I'm looking to bring another guy. So I'm shaking the bag a bit. So, you know, there'll be one or two in, one or two out very shortly. Is that basically saying that perhaps this team isn't good enough to, to win the league, so to win the playoffs you've got to change it about? Oh, it's not good enough. You know, we know that. It's not good enough. I mean, someone's trying to break in there. No, it's, it's not good enough. And, uh, you know, what we've got to do is we've got, you know, as a club, we've looked at it. You know, we've had some tough times. We still have. We've got to shake the bag. We've got to look at our budgets and we've got to bring in what we think we need. And, you know, offensively, you know, we need a little bit more and guys need a little bit more support in that area. And I think our back end is solid. I think our goaltending is solid. But I think, you know, we could... We could be putting teams away a little earlier than we are. And uh, yeah, I mean, fourth place, we might have dropped into fifth tonight, depending on Cardiff's result, you know, is, uh, is the reason why we are. We're not good enough, but we're hoping to be good enough to, to, to shake it up for the playoffs. And, uh, you know, that's a trophy that we want to win. The win against Brayhead was a great win. The win against Coventry is a tremendous win. It, it's setting the flyers up, isn't it? Yeah, I think that uh, we've been waiting for this turn for quite a while, and it's taken a lot longer than we thought. But uh, 
This week's been a great week for the hockey club and uh, hopefully a confidence builder because uh, you can see the fans have stuck behind us. It was a great atmosphere tonight and uh, I think we just got to keep building on this. Uh, and you know what, I think that uh, if we're going to make a run in the playoffs, these are the teams we've got to beat, you know? You create chance after chance after chance and tonight you took some. Yeah, finally. I mean, it's been a big thing about us. Uh, I said for the Flyers to win a hockey game, you got to score three or four goals every night. We're not going to grind out a game one nothing. You know, we make our defensive mistakes, and we know that. But um, you know, finally the pucks are going in the net, and uh, you know, if we keep that, we got some guys who can score. Hart Manis is coming out of his shell. He starts putting pucks in the game in the net every game for us. I mean, I'll tell you what, like, uh, we should see more wins on the board for us. Yeah, Hart Manis has got all that speed and, and great ability. The fans love a hero. God, they've got one here in Zemlat, the goalie, yeah. haven't they? Oh, I'll tell you what, I mean, Zemmer, uh, he plays to the crowd, but uh, to take nothing away from him, I mean, he's a, a lot of big games for us. I mean, he, he was the factor. I mean, you look back to the game in Nottingham, I'm sure you heard about that, and uh, in games like this, I mean, Zemmer keeps us in hockey games and, and lets us grind it out. You know, we have the confidence that he's going to stop the puck back there. And, you know, like I said earlier, we're going to make our mistakes. Put my hand up and admit that, but we're making less and less. We're getting better and better. You saw this hockey club play right at the start of the season, and you know me and you talked about it. So I think the guys' confidence is building. I think that uh, in, you know to get back to what you said about Zemlak, we get him playing like that, we got every chance to win a hockey game. Eighth place, Hall Stingrays go down tonight. No points. Two points for the Flyers. Two points closer. Those playoffs are in sight. Well, I think so, and I mean I think it's three games in hand. I looked at my schedule. We're like, well, we got some, we got some big teams coming up, like Brayhead and Coventry, and you know, we've 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 picked up four points here. So we got to keep looking forward. We got to think we can win every hockey game we get into, and uh, you know, good things are happening. So uh, the directors backed me. They got a couple extra guys in, like Kadek and uh, Backerlick, and uh, you know, it's making a difference for us. So a great win for Fife there. Join us after the break when Dave and I will be dissecting the game here tonight, as well as the last bit of action for you from around the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Hello and welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League highlight show here on Sky Sports. Now, the Five Flyers have just taken that one step closer to the playoff spots by taking a victory over the Coventry Blaze. And Dave, for the past few weeks, all you've been telling me is go to Fife and they'll show you how it's done. And wow, how, I mean, the hospitality we've received tonight has been amazing. Everybody in Kakadi, everybody in Fife has looked after us royally. And uh, the Five Flyers players themselves have then put a great show on for us also. You know, we started the night off, folks, saying could the Five Flyers make the final eight? Could they make it into the playoffs? Well, if they continue to play, perform and work as hard as they did tonight, well, then the answer is surely yes. Now, Dave, I noticed you had a stripy scarf on earlier, but you were... Uh you seem to have adopted a Fife one now. Well, I think we've all become Fife Flyers fans, yeah. haven't we? I think Dundee Stars used to be my favourite team in Scotland, but I think now we're all part of the Kakadi faithful. And this building gets you like that. We talked about the raw emotion of it right at the beginning, and we sat in the middle of the fans tonight, and you just became part of it, and you loved it, and it was a, a great atmosphere. Absolutely. Well, the Fife Flyers at the first period didn't seem to get going, did they? The Coventry Blazers thought they were going to have it, but then at the end... They took it. Normally, when you come to Scotland, you struggle in that first period. You've got your bus legs, but the Coventry Blaze had the better of the first session. They went then 2 0 up, and I'll be honest with you, I thought it was all over at 2 0. I couldn't see how the uh, Flyers were going to get back in it. They weren't going to get back in it by skill, they had to get in it by sheer graft, and that's exactly what they did. They worked hard. Their power play was truly dreadful tonight until the last one, and Danny Stewart comes back and haunts his former boss. That penalty shootout, though. The atmosphere in here was just electric. You know what? Sport needs heroes. Everybody wants a hero. And the Five Flyers, they've got a hero in Zemlat, the goalie. They absolutely adore him. They love him here, and rightly so. He's somebody they can build a franchise on. Now, I just have to reference, we have a furry friend behind me. Dave, you've been replaced right. by my furry birthday bear. They've looked after us well, haven't <laughs> they? We've had caricatures, we've had presents. The Five Flyers have, uh, have looked after us royally. Certainly have. Well, I'm a happy girl. Time now to take the last bit of action for you. Here's Chris Ellis. 
Sheffield playing their only game of the weekend and Dundee looking to make it a four-point weekend. And they went in front the home side. Hutchins stepping out from behind the back to fire past British netminder Jeff Warhouse for 1-0 to the home side in the first period. But poor defensive work and Jonathan Phillips, nice move on the netminder. It's 1-1, 7-22 gone. Steelers then thought they'd gone ahead, still in the first session, but Neil Wilson, no goal. Man in the crease, so we see the game level still. But no matter for the Steelers, Stevenson and King, they combine for Finity. He has time right-hand side low and it's 2-1 to the visitors. Sheffield turn a one-goal deficit into a 2-1 lead but a good second period for the Stars. They drew level. McLean in 11th of the season. The Stars outshot the Steelers 13-6 in this period and Mitchell when he started the move he finishes it off a sixth of the year for him. Power play goal 3-2 in the second session. The third session though the Sheffield Steelers came back and that final touch is by Finity again, leading the team by example of 13th of the year. We're tied at 3-3. The comeback kings have come back once more. Now, can Laguie win it? No, he's denied. So we're going to penalty shots. Burn still. Backhand goal. It's 1-0 in the shootout. Brent Hughes, the player coach. Oh, he's denied by Wallhouse. Good save. So... Can Logui score? Yes, low. He's not going to miss another chance in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Kalanis, he has to score. No, he doesn't. Wallhouse saves and backstops the Steelers to another victory in penalty shots. Final score, Dundee 3, Sheffield 4. A big crowd in the big blue tent. Challenge Cup semi-final. First leg action. Nottingham await the winners in the final. First period action. Matska into the offensive zone. Dropped off. And Phil Hill scores a 19th goal of the season. What a January he's having in particular. But Cardiff ahead in their own barn. It was intense. The players got into it. The fans were loud. And as you'd expect, they gave everything. Look, you couldn't go near the netminder without players coming in just to push you out the way. Don't forget, these two sides met last season at the same stage. Belfast went on to the final but lost to Nottingham. And the year before that, Cardiff lost to Nottingham in the final. So who would go through to the final? There's still plenty of action to be played. And this now is third period action. No goals in the second session. And watch how defence is turned into attack. Belfast battling, but Van der Reeken wins possession. Gives it to Gerard Adams. Adams into the offensive zone, into the left circle. Oh, that takes a wicked deflection. And Murphy is beaten. What a wicked deflection that fooled Murphy. You can see how disappointed the Giants are. It's a two-goal game. 2-0 two to the home side. But... Power play time now for the Belfast Giants. They need a response and they are moving it around nicely with the man advantage. Who is coming into the slot? Don't leave Robert Dowd there. Left circle. It's a one goal game. The assists there going to Rebeck and Mason. They set him up so well. So it's 2 1. Now, crucial. If it's Belfast to get the next goal, they will be favourites going into the second leg. But can Cardiff get a two goal advantage? Pierce. He's a star man for them, no, denied by Murphy. And that's the end of the scoring, end of the first leg. Cardiff Devils 2, Belfast Giants 1. Scores from Friday the 20th of January, the Belfast Giants 6, the Edinburgh Capitals 2. On Saturday, the Belfast Giants went down in that all-important home game to the Nottingham Panthers 3-2. Cardiff Devils also a 3-2 victory on the road in Brayhead. Our game, of course, the Five Flyers beating the Coventry Blaze in a shootout 3-2. And the Hall Stingrays going down to the Dundee Stars. A huge win there for Dundee 5-2. Flip forward, Sunday, Coventry Blaze came back with a bang 6-2 over the Brayhead clan. Sheffield, another shootout victory, this time over the Dundee Stars. A very important win for Sylvan Cloutier and the Hall Stingrays, beating the Capitals 4-2 in the battle for the playoffs and the Nottingham Panthers 4-1 victors over the Five Flyers. On Wednesday, the first leg of the Challenge Cup and an important victory for the Cardiff Devils, 2-1 over the Belfast Giants, all to play for in the second leg.
So the Belfast Giants have a five-point advantage over the Nottingham Panthers after that victory for Nottingham at the Odyssey just tightens the gap a little bit. The Sheffield Steelers keep on winning. They're only two points behind the Panthers now, but just look at how many games they have in hand. However, they have to win those games in hand, don't they? The battle for fourth place, that continues to hot up. One point separates the Blaze from the Cardiff Devils. Can Brayhead join that party? I'm not so sure. And then the battle for the final slot. Remember, the top eight make the playoffs. Can Dundee and Fife catch up with the Edinburgh Capitals and the Hall Stingrays? It's still all to play for. So if you like what you've seen here tonight and you fancy taking a game or two over the weekend, here's what's coming to a rink near you. Saturday the 28th of January, Brayhead take on Dundee, Cardiff face Hull, Edinburgh v Sheffield, Fife v Belfast and it's Nottingham versus Coventry. We on 24 hours of Sunday the 29th of January and it's Coventry versus Nottingham, Dundee versus Fife. Edinburgh face Sheffield and Hull take on Cardiff. And finally, Tuesday the 31st of January, it's Fife versus Brayhead. Dave, a couple of big games there, one of them being back here in Kakadi next Saturday. Absolutely. I reckon half of Kakadi was in the shrink here tonight, seeing the uh, Five Flyers beat the Coventry Blazers. Well, I'd recommend the other half come down next Saturday and, and take on the Belfast Giants. It's going to be a tough, uh, tough game for Belfast, a tough game for anybody coming into this building between now and the end of March. Certainly is. Move on to Sunday. And of course, Nottingham, they travel to Coventry. They're still yet to win there this season. Yes, they haven't won there at all. And the Nottingham Panthers have certainly given themselves another massive boost, you know, by beating the Belfast Fast Giants on Saturday. Now what they've got to do is go into the Skydome Arena and try and win in a rink they haven't won in all year. I think it's going to be a tough ass for them as well. It certainly is. Well, you can see all of the highlights of those games on next week's show. We're back next Friday, the 2nd of February at 7 o'clock on Sky Sports 4. Well, that's just about all we've got time for today. All that's left to say from Dave and myself, as always, is thank you for watching. We have certainly had a fabulous time here in Kakodi. We'll see you next week. Good night. Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims.